Allow me to start today's show by reading out a reader's comment right here on this channel. And I read, No video, no comment about Johanna Ngeno and Oscar Sudi. But if Uhuru and Raila messes an instant video from CK pops up, silence is also a form of speech. <laughs> now, by the way, today's show is precisely on that topic. But let us quickly deal with a misconception yeah, that comes up from this particular comment. Although it is true, this is a channel for analyzing politics, I don't rush to do videos. I spend a lot of time on research, much more time than I spend on producing videos. I have to. And while it is true in some instances, I come up with a video very quickly. There's usually a very good reason. Maybe I've been researching on that very subject and then the story breaks so I can link the two very quickly. But in a vast majority of the cases, yeah, I have to do some research. I have to understand yeah, what is really going on. Otherwise, I'll just end up repeating what you already know. Anyway, we have taken up enough time. Let's get right down to it. Now, I believe most Kenyans agree that we can discuss politics. We can politic. We can attack each other. Let's do whatever we have to do. But don't bring my mother into it. It doesn't matter what she has done. And it doesn't matter what you have to say. Let's just not bring in our mothers into this. Why should we? You know, whenever I meet people I went to high school with, they are very quick to remind me of the only time in my six years in high school that I ever got involved in a physical fight with another student. The other student was a member of the herbalist society. <laughs> that is of course code for wale wanavuta ile sigara ingine. Si ya kawaida, ile sigara ingine nzito ambayo inaingia kwa akili. <laughs> and this guy really provoked me. Yeah, and I started walking away. And he continued provoking me. And then he mentioned my mother. I saw red. I lost it. Yeah, I believe it is only natural. But having said that, I am fully convinced that the people who made the comments that have offended others so much did it deliberately. They knew precisely and exactly what kind of reaction they were going to get. So for this show, we need to focus on the why. And more importantly, yeah, I believe we need to bring this whole saga into perspective. Which, in my opinion, has already been done for us. It was done by a journalist called Wahiga Maura on Citizen TV. When he posed a certain question yeah, to the Jubilee Secretary General, Rafael Tuju. You see, the truth is, yeah, in case you've missed it, both sides of the political divide know something that we don't. Let's get that very clear. And now they are fighting. And now they want to suck us in into the duel. And yet we don't have all the facts. Yeah, and they'll not give us all the facts. We don't know where this thing really started. And you can be sure they'll never tell us. And so Wahiga Mora posed the question to the Secretary General of the Party as follows. About 1.7 million Kenyans have lost their job yeah, over the virus crisis. Many have been evicted from their houses. People have lost their livelihoods. Many small and medium-sized businesses, as predicted, 
have not been able to go beyond June, which means they're now out of business. Many people have been laid off. So Waiga more opposed all those people watching this show. And they're wondering what the ruling Jubilee Party yeah, is doing to deal with these very real and harsh realities facing Kenyans. Raphael Tuju's response was priceless. It was clear that that question caught him completely of God. You know when you ask somebody a question and they start by responding, that is a very good question. Many times, not all the time, many times they are stalling as they think, as they quickly think of a response. <laughs> and to me, that brought this whole issue into perspective. Both sides of the political divide are fighting each other. They are spending a lot of time and energy issuing statements, calling press conferences to attack each other. So where does that leave us? Yeah, the electorate, the voters. Clearly, the other party priorities more important than us. Yeah, the citizens of the country called Kenya. The long-suffering Wananchi of the country called Kenya. And that one came out very clearly in a few seconds <laughs> of the reaction to a very simple question. You will agree with me that what should be happening is that our leaders should be spending sleepless nights yeah, trying to sort out this crisis amongst ordinary Kenyans. The party leadership should be constantly discussing and throwing around ideas while quickly implementing others over this issue. Now in that kind of environment, when this question was fired at Rafael Tuju, his reaction would have been very different if this is actually what was happening. Off the top of his head, he would have had several examples, several things to say about what the government is doing. But as we all saw very clearly, <laughs> he didn't. And so we can conclude that the crisis facing Kenyans is not a priority of government right now. They have other more urgent priorities, which in my view is very sad. But of course it's same old, same old. So what else is new? <laughs> Now, let's dive into the politics. In my view, a faction of the Jubilee Party made a tactical error by having Johanna Ngeno, legislator for a constituency that is very difficult to pronounce, <laughs> by having that man arrested and charged in court. That, in my view, was a tactical error. Because had they done nothing, the other side of the political divide would have ended up very frustrated. Because it is very clear that Team Tangatanga were looking for a reaction. What Johanna Ngeno said was bait. Now I appreciate the fact that most of us don't fish, therefore we may not fully understand what bait is. When somebody goes out fishing, yeah, they need a hook. Yeah, which the fish will bite into yeah, and therefore get captured. Yeah, then they'll roll up the string and get the fish out of the water. But this is very important. The fish never sees the hook. What the fish sees is something that looks like food. And that is the whole idea. Yeah, because you want to get the fish to bite, yeah, to take the bait. And that is why if the fish come along and they say, hey, that looks like something that Marehemu so and so, yeah, bit, yeah, and they're gone. So I will avoid it. I'm not going to take that bait. And it swims away to safety. This, of course, leaves the fisherman very frustrated. 
So what Johanna Ngeno said was clearly bait. And it was quickly followed by remarks by Capseret legislator Oscar Sudi yeah, in what was clearly a well choreographed <laughs> arrangement. Now, if you don't believe this was a very carefully planned and executed move by Tim Tangatanga, go back and take in the Caleb Kositani interview with Citizen TV. Observe carefully his body language. He even glances off screen a few times. In fact, at one juncture, he starts saying something, then stops in mid-sentence yeah, after glancing off screen. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having handlers help you field questions during an interview. There's nothing wrong with that. Politicians do it all the time. But when it happens, then you know that that particular interview is critical to that politician and his people. So, what were the objectives here? What is the endgame? Number one, Tim Tangatanga telling us, those were Johanna Ngeno's personal views. Those were Oscar Sudi's personal views. They're asking us, what makes you think they're the views of Deputy President? Why do you want to drag the Deputy President into what every politician says? And then they're giving us a very cheeky example. They're saying, for instance, when David Murade talks, why don't you people say he's talking on behalf of the President? <laughs> Bottom line, if David Murade does not speak on behalf of the president, then Oscar Sudi and Johanna Ngeno are not speaking on behalf of the deputy president. What? And so the whole idea going forward is that if David Murade keeps on talking the way he speaks against the deputy president, and he has not been sent by the president, he is not speaking on behalf of the president, then Tim Tangatanga will also have their people speaking the way they're speaking. And you'd better not say they've been sent by the deputy president or they're speaking on behalf of the deputy president. <laughs> now, obviously, the most likely outcome out of this is that David Murade will tone down yeah, his attacks against the deputy president. That is the most likely. Yeah consequence. However, you can't take it to the bank. Anything can happen. This is politics. Buona Murade could decide to do the very opposite and turn up the volume. Oh, yes. But by far the most interesting development in all this are the remarks of one Raila Amolo Odinga, who has said that what the Rift Valley legislators are doing is beating the drums of war. Fascinatingly, Raphael Tuju said precisely the same thing in different words, which may suggest that the other faction of the Jubilee Party saw the bait very clearly. They saw the trap, but they still arrogantly went ahead and called the Tim Tangatanga bluff and arrested Johanna Ngeno. This arrogance also came out in the statement of Rafael Tujo, where he said yeah, that some people are intellectual dwarfs. <laughs> Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. And Caleb Kositani, who was being interviewed in the same show in a different segment, referred to that comment as satanic. <laughs> now, in my view, this kind of reaction from the faction of the ruling party that controls all the instruments of power, yeah, this is what should worry Kenyans the most. Because it suggests that they may make other moves yeah, soon to clamp down, to respond to what these Rift Valley legislators have said and are saying. And in case you still don't get it, yeah, let me remind you of an African proverb. Ndovu zikipigana ni nyasi ndomia. When elephants fight, it's the grass that gets hurt. We will of course interrogate this issue further 
as developments continue to unravel. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.